All right, welcome back. Oh. We're into the last session of uh, our morning. Excellent. Yeah. So it's time to jump out of that wallet and into the in-app purchasing. Yeah. Now, actually, I, I originally had wallet and in-app purchase in the same... You did, yeah. Yeah, but that's, they're actually quite different topics, which okay. is why we've broken them up. Um, obviously, in the same kind of feature area, mm -hmm. but uh, in-app purchasing, of course, is, uh, is very specific and quite flexible in its own way, a way of buying, st uh, of offering stuff for sale from within your application. Right. So let's get straight into this one. In-app purchasing for Windows Phone 8. So what we're going to talk about is what kind of things uh, you can offer for in-app purchase. Uh, the kind of products that you uh, are offer, which are these two types, durables and consumables, I'll uh, explain what they are. The, uh, the actual whole purchase life cycle and how you uh, program your application to work with in-app purchase. So, what we've got with this, this is a, a great opportunity for you. It's actually the best business model for most apps. It's the best way of monetizing your applications. It's a great way of allowing in-app upsell. That's the key phrase here. This is a way of offering uh, your basic app for uh, a modest or, or, or free price even, but then uh, upselling to your user to uh, allow them to add additional capabilities or to buy some consumables. They can spend tokens, if you like. They can spend on on game uh, on uh, you know attempt tries in a game or something like that. And encourages repeat monetization. It's actually proven to be a very great way of earning income from within your applications. And in just a refresh of where we've come from, Windows Phone Seven it was only possible to sell an application at a fixed price through uh, what the Windows Phone store was called the marketplace there. it's the same thing it's just changed name and that was the only way you could actually get income for the application so the user would buy your app once uh, they pay that price and thereafter they had rights to use the app forever uh, and, and or, uh, all different updates as well so now with Windows Phone 8 you can create an application sell it for uh, whatever sum you like but you can actually generate income from the user while they are using the, uh, the application. Uh, the Microsoft Store gives you licenses for items that have been purchased by users of your application, they're digital licenses, and you can check them at runtime and use the, the current state of the user's licensing to activate application features or provide additional in-application resources such as items in games. Uh, so, uh, there's two kinds of these. Durables, which is the kind of thing that a user buys them once and owns forever. So typical example here is you sell a version of your, ga of your game which comes with only one or two levels for free, for example. And then if they want to play uh, further levels, they can purchase them. And once they've purchased them, then they've got those levels forever. Or maps or game items. Consumables are things that get used up. And these are game tokens. So you'll, the, the user... Try, uh, spends them effectively by interacting with your application or movie rental. So once they've been spent, uh, they're gone forever. And uh, when they're expired, they have to go and buy some more. So the process here to define an in-app item uh, is uh, you use uh, App Hub, the uh, dev.windowsphone.com, uh, to, uh, to uh, define the in-app items. Uh, then you... Uh, Use the SDK uh, to uh, integrate that into the uh, experience, the offering to your users. And by that I mean uh, you're, uh, uh, you're going to sort of um, uh, offer items in some way, whatever's appropriate for your application, that are in-app purchasable items. And you need to check for items that they may have purchased uh, for uh, durables to whether they're allowed access to a particular feature in the application. And you also choose the countries and pricing and you manage and monitor and respond. And this is a very important part of the whole process. Um, there's nothing more annoying for a user if they uh, feel that they are, have purchased something and your app is telling them that they haven't. So, you submit uh, products that the user can buy through in-app purchase to the Windows Phone Store, just as you have done up to now with applications. And then, using the dashboard in the Windows Phone Store, you then assign products to one or more applications. So, from the store's point of view, these are just additional items a consumer can buy, just the same as applications, if you like. And the pay payment comes to you in the same way. The, you get 70% of anything, Microsoft keeps 30 Payment comes to you in the same way as with applications. 
And, and APIs are provided so that an application can determine at runtime what products have been purchased and adjust availability of the content or features that you're offering to the user according to their current license position. So this is, I'm just going to run through the next few slides, the process, the whole end-to-end -end flow of what happens with the, relating to in-app, how you set this up, the role of Microsoft and the role of you and what the application does. So first of all, you, the developer, you create your app in just the same way as you always have done, and you submit it for verification and publishing to the Windows Phone store using your account in the Dev Center. Now, this is a process we're going to go into in much more detail in the very next session, which is uh, after our break. Uh, we're going to go into the whole Windows Phone store uh, pro pro uh, submission process. And then you also need to go off to... Uh, you need to upload a list of the product items that you want to sell in your app to the store using, again, using your account on the Dev Center. During this process, you just give each product a name, description, price, and define the countries where it can be sold. So it's just a description, if you like. It's not a physical, it's not a zap, there's no digital item that you upload. And then you can go in and associate each product in that purchase product with an application. So you're defining the products in the Dev Center so that they can be bought using the Microsoft, Microsoft Commerce platform via the, uh, the store infrastructure. The products themselves, of course, what the product means, that's all dictated by you and controlled by you. And if it's digital content, it'll be stuff that's sitting on your own servers or your own infrastructure. So at no point does Microsoft in the, in the uh, Dev Center or in the Windows Phone store, do they actually hold digital copies of whatever it is you're selling, for example. And then, when the application runs, using the in-app purchase APIs, when your app runs, it can query the store for the list of in-app purchase products associated with the application. And then you obviously surface them to the user uh, to uh, to uh, um, uh, of, to the user in whatever way is appropriate for the application, whether they're items on a list box or through some kind of other UI, a pop-up panel, whatever it is that's appropriate for your application. And once they initiate the purchase, the user then is presented with uh, the, a purchasing experience. So they get a dialogue saying, do you want to purchase this item and choose the credit card, a payment card from the, the wallet uh, to, in order to actually fulfill, the, to actually complete the purchase. Uh, and then when the purchase is com complete, your app has to then fulfill that purchase. In other words, mm -hmm. deliver the goods by either enabling some application feature or by downloading some digital content from your own back-end service. So as with any other features, uh, uh, in many other features in Windows Phone, the actual purchase experience, the uh, point of sale experience, is, is controlled by a launcher and chooser. So it's, it's a consistent experience. All apps will offer this to users in exactly the same way. So this, this consistency across the platform yeah, is an important thing. And all purchase methods that, you, that a user can use to purchase apps and games and music in the Windows Phone Store can be also be used by the in-app purchase API. So this includes payment cards. And one thing we didn't mention, actually, with the wallet uh, is that you can now not only register credit and debit cards, but there also is support for online payment mechanisms such as PayPal. And these are all registered in the wallet, and these can be used by the user to purchase in-app purchase items. And having a consistent, this whole Microsoft-controlled, uh, secure purchase and billing mechanism is an important part of in, uh, in, in encouraging trust in this whole process for the end users. They need to feel that Microsoft is in charge and controlling this mechanism. So, you know, trust, the user trusting the whole system is an important ingredient in any, any purchase, anything that involves monetary uh, exchange and uh, payments. So uh, then, when the app launches, is resumed, or after a purchase, again, there's some other in-app purchase APIs where you can download the licenses the current user currently has for in-app purchase items with that application. And using that information, this is where your app will determine whether to allow the user to play those levels or allow to read that digital media of some kind or, or whatever it is. So this is where you deliver the goods. It's based on that license position. Uh, the store will also gives back to you a digitally signed receipt. So this is a this is a, a, a 
document, if you like, uh, a record that can't be uh, can't be tampered with because it's got a digital signature on it, so you can test that it hasn't been tampered with it. And you can use that. You can incorporate that into your own delivery content delivery systems and use it, for example, on your back end systems to verify the digitally signed receipt and use that as a way of releasing to the end user uh, whatever the uh, the product is that you're you're selling. You're going to release to them. So fulfillment is the process of making sure that your customers get the goods they've purchased. Uh, for typically, this means as soon as the purchase has been verified. Uh, and we get this digital receipt I was just talking about. And when fulfilling the durables through your service, you should always send that receipt along with your user ID that you've defined for the user and uh, use that to, uh, to help fulfill the, uh, the actual delivery of the content. This is how you can uh, enumerate the uh, listings for in-app in app purchases. In this case, we're looking for ones with specific product IDs. I, I detect the hand of Mr. Miles in this again. Uh, just, just saying. Uh, so the app can then verify whether the user has already purchased the items by checking against its own data, or which may be implemented locally or more likely on a server. For those that the user can purchase, you can display details on the screen using data from this listing information object. So this is where you're figuring out um, what products are available and showing it on the screen. And then, when the user wants to actually purchase one of these, uh, has, uh, through the UI you've implemented, your app has selected an item for purchase, then this is where your app will call this API, Request Product Purchase Async. So this, is, this invokes the launcher experience, if you like, and you see the kind of screen there, confirm purchase. Uh, there's a graphic that you supply, the description, uh, the price, of course. This all comes from the store, so they, they're kind of linking to the store. This is just the same as if they were buying an app or, uh, or buying some music. It's, um, it's asynchronous, as you can see. And you can get these digital receipts, which can be returned from the back-end infrastructure uh, to, uh, you can use to help uh, fulfill that, uh, that uh, purchase. So the user now has purchased some items, but you need to, every time the application runs, uh, you need to check what their current licensed situation is. And for this, you can call this current app.license information API and get the product licenses. This pulls back your current situation for that particular user. And then you have this, if license is active, you can work out whether to, uh, to uh, enable special cheese power in this case. Cheese power. Yeah, so mm. there you go, you've got cheese power. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is an example of uh, fulfilling, uh, offering a bit, uh, certain features to the user that are controlled by uh, in-app purchase uh, licenses. You need to uh, protect your consumables. This license information API provides information about purchases, not the state of consumables. That is your job. So, for example, if a user purchases a bag of 100 gold pieces in your application, it's your responsibility to track the usage of those pieces uh, in such a way that the user always sees the correct state of that product, the number of gold pieces remaining. So you need to uh, make sure that you pay special attention to that. Like I said, a great cause of user dissatisfaction if your app gets this wrong. How do you test all this stuff? So you've got three options for testing in-app purchase capabilities in your app. I'm going to show you a demo in a minute. Uh, first of all, there is a, as we're going to learn after lunch, actually, you can submit your app as a beta app, a beta app, as you say over here. Uh, and you can add beta in-app products. So the, you can then uh, allow your app to be used by a named group of people, and they're running the app in beta mode. And, and while you're in beta mode, any purchases they make, obviously, are just uh, then they're not real purchases. So mm -hmm. you can go through the whole process. You've uploaded the products totally to the uh, Windows Phone store. It's all working exactly as, uh, um, as it should do. Um, but obviously, no money changes hands. Um, as an alternative to testing in-app purchase by using a beta app, you can add, there's a library, a special library called the Mock In-App Purchase Library, which you can download from the Dev Center. This simple uh, mock library is designed to make it easier to work with in-app purchase without needing to set up uh, any your own back-end services. It's a thin wrapper around the in-app purchase APIs. Based on how you initialize this library, it will either mock all the responses to the, uh, the in-app purchase system, 
uh, or it will pass all the all the calls through to the real backend system. So in, you can in debug mode you can be testing against the mocks, and then in a re, in a release mode it's actually it's live and you're hitting the real the real backend system. And the library is designed to mimic the way in-app purchase works, and I'll show you this in a moment. Uh, as a third alternative to testing in-app purchase uh, or in those ways, uh, you can. There's also a way of setting up a, uh, a your own sort of custom um, in-app in purchase mock service in your own IIS. Uh, and again, there's a full instruction in the documentation. It's a, it's a, a, this one has the advantage that it doesn't require you to submit any data up to the dev center, uh, and it allows you to uh, quickly test the whole end-to-end -end process and simulate the platform interaction between your app and the Windows Phone platform. You need, really need to pay a lot of attention to testing this stuff. It's obviously serious business when you're taking money off people in this way. Um, I'm going to demo in a minute, but I've just been asked by uh, our support team here. Uh, if you could, if you're in, currently watching in full screen, if you wouldn't mind leaving at a point to your own convenience, there's a current poll up if you haven't uh, actually ans answered that already. So when you get a chance, if you wouldn't mind, you go and answer the current poll. That would be cool. We would love that. Yeah. All right. Um, demo time. Demo time. So... Uh, Back in Visual Studio, and it's our old friend, the Contoso Cookbook. So, wow. uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. But this version of Contoso Cookbook has been uh, in-app purchase enabled. So the idea of this, if you remember, we got the different recipe groups like, right. you know, Chinese, Italian, French. The idea now is that you get some of them for free, uh, but if you want some of the other ones, you have to actually purchase them. Okay. And the other thing as well is that the app itself is shipped in trial mode, and if you want to get any recipe, any groups, you have to actually purchase the app as well. So you can use in-app purchase to upgrade from trial to a full mode, which is a, a nice usage of it. We haven't really touched on this yet. Um, so just quickly to show you how it works. Oh, before um, I dive into the code, I have added a reference to, if we look in the references here, Yes, uh, see the mock IAP lib, the mock in-app purchase lib. This is what you can get from uh, dev.windowsphone.com, and this is the mocking library. Um, the here we go at the top. If you're in debug mode, we're using the mock IAP li lib and using and we set a symbol of store is pointing at the mock IAP lib. If we're in release mode. Store is actually going to map to the proper Windows application model dot store API. So you're, you're cutting the mock IAP mm -hmm. lib out of the out of the loop there. Uh, we'd stopped on a breakpoint, which is this. This is where, if we're in debug mode, we're going to use the mock uh, in-app purchase library. So you have to initialize it, and then we're actually going to read information out of this XML file just to show you what's in there. Uh, mock. Oh, I've got to find this guy. It's in the data folder. Here we go. This is the, the information that is in that uh, that XML file. This is our this is our test uh, products. So we've got some durables, which are Italian recipes. This is not purchased, not been purchased. This is an in-app purchase item that hasn't been purchased yet. So this is a simulating what the back-end system is holding for you. Um, all the detail. Here's um, here's the uh, French, which has been purchased, um, and Going down further, there's also an example of consumables. I'm not going to go into. You can actually purchase uh, uh, timer minutes as well in this sample, mm. but I, I haven't got time to cover that, so I'll leave that for you to investigate at your own uh, in your own rate. Uh, so here we go. We're actually reading that data out of that uh, that XML file, loading it in, and we're setting our mock IAP. We're populating in-app purchase items from XML. So this is how you can set up de test items uh, mm -hmm. in for doing the testing. So let that run. Here's our home page, and you'll notice that in the list now, uh, you remember we had Chinese and Italian weren't purchased, but oh. French was. So the ones that need to be purchased have got a, a padlock shown in the list now. Uh, but I'm going to go to uh, to French, and we're going off to the uh, the group detail page. We're showing all the details of all the recipes in the French group, and this is looking for: Are we still in trial mode? Yes, we are. So if we're in trial mode, then we actually set the list of recipes to be collapsed, and we show something called button buy. So we're going to show a buy this app button, uh, which is uh, there. We go. So here we go. We're going to show this. Let that run. So here's our UI, and when we go to the recipes list, 
where we'd normally expect to see the list of recipes. Instead, we're seeing this Buy This App button. And if I now go and buy the whole app, we're into this thing here where we go Features License Buy Application. I'm going to step into that. Um, and this is where we're going to simulate uh, actual purchase of an app. But you notice here that this is the debug. This is what we're going to do. But if we were actually running under a, a release thing, then we'd go off and show this marketplace detail task launcher. So it would go off to the store and give you the option to right. purchase the full app. Um, so we're going to let that run and go through this simulation. So this is the message box, uh, which it replaces the normal bit where you would go off to the store and buy the app. But I'm going to actually say, yeah, let's go and buy this application. So now we actually see the list of recipes instead. So we're still on the same page, but now we're on the recipes. Uh, and you can go in, and uh, each each time we go in to look at a recipe, it's checking whether we are we have purchased this group or not. If I go back to one of the ones we haven't purchased, which is the Chinese uh, licenses trial is false, so we're still going to show we're going to actually this time we're going to show the full recipe list. So that much is enabled. Um, here's our list, but when I go to this. Uh, we've selected an item in that recipes list, and now it's looking whether we have li are, we, are we licensed or not. So we need a license for this, and uh, we haven't got one as yet. So we're going to go into uh, show this page instead, product info page, rather than the recipe detail page, which is where we'd normally go. Um, so you can see how we're building into the, the UI here. Um, uh, this is now the, this is the, the buy this group page, rather than the, the one that you would normally expect to see. When it's simulating purchase, buy that, uh, and we should be this time. We should be good, and now we're seeing all the recipes. Excellent. That works so that great. shows kind of how you can test it from a debug point of view. Yeah, pretty simple. Pretty simple. I like it. All right. Uh, now you showed it was a simple example of that as in-app purchase as a great way to implement app upgrade. So this is a very powerful way of monetizing an application. So it's now possible using these mechanisms to move from a free or light version to the full version without the user needing to download a new application. So right. one of the things we used to do in Windows Phone 7, you'd have a, a free version, which would sit in the free section, and mm -hmm. they would download that. And you'd kind of have nagware in there saying, oh, you know, you, you're enjoying this app, but you could have so much more. Please buy the full version. Right. And they were actually two different apps in the yes. store. Whereas now, we can offer a free version and 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 unlock the full functionality from an in-app purchase thing. So they, they don't need to download another app. So it's just another way of doing it, but it's probably a more elegant way of, of getting that upgrade implemented. I think so. That's great. So there you go. Um, that's a very, very quick look at in-app purchase. Um, like I said, the big message here is that don't take this lightly. Obviously, you're selling items. This is a commercial transaction. You've got to be really careful to make sure that uh, users get the goods they have paid for. Absolutely. That's really what it comes down to. This is real serious stuff, folks. <laughs> right. You know what else is serious? It's time for lunch. <laughs> it is time for lunch for us. Yes. Okay, we're going to take a longer break. We, we need some food. Um, we probably all need a break. When we come back, we're going to go into the whole store. store. The store. Excellent. Yes. Uh, that will be the at the top of the hour, so it's around about 40 minutes time. So, Okay, we'll see you then. Alrighty.